Well, welcome back to Business Insights. We're looking at the new tax regime vis-a-vis -vis how they affect um, the you know, car importation um, subsector in the country. And I'm now being joined by the acting national president of the Association of Nigerian Licensed Customs Agents, Dr. Kayode Farinto. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, Dr. Farinto. Good morning, Dr. Farinto. Can you hear us? Yes, yeah, I can hear you now. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you. Let's talk Happy about the new regime, the new tax regime that was just then put forward by the federal government vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, uh, you know, the 2023 um, FPM. There is an existing 5% and 15% of import adjustment tax on new and old vehicles. Do you have any clarification on what this new policy actually means? Uh, number one, there is no clarification yet. And we are sending a letter to the Honorable Minister. Uh, for clarification on this issue. However, we want to believe that uh, it looks as if uh, Bobby Travis is being set up for a new government that is coming on board. And that is why, we, because uh, we have issues on the issue of tax regime, particularly as it affects used vehicles, uh, imported vehicles, and new vehicles. And uh, we are still pleading with even the, un in the outgoing government to review these uh, taxes and the levy. Now that the Ministry of Finance uh, is bringing out a new levy, uh, everybody is confused. We don't know what that meant because there's no explanatory notes attached to it. Hence, we sent a letter to the Honorable Minister seeking for clarification on this, but nobody seems to be happy. All right, uh, Dr. Farinto, let me even understand this um, measure because while we think that before any new policy would actually uh, have been done, uh, consultations and stakeholders' engagement would have been made uh, concerning um, the new policy. Uh, are you saying that the federal government did not really consult uh, with some um, stakeholders in your sector? That is why we, that is why we believe that uh, the outgoing government, even though people have rated it well, but in, in the maritime industry, we have never been too uh, happy with most of their policy because nobody engages us. Nobody is even seek uh, our qualifications or input when it, it, it affects, I mean, results to issue of our policies matter. And uh, we just roll out your policy. And by the time it's now backfires or you know, backfires, we start looking at uh, looking for fire brigade approach. Uh, going forward, we one of the things that made us uh, actually voted for the incoming government was that. Going forward, you must always take us along, carry us along before policies are formulated. We will now give you advice, professional advice, on how the, the workability of such pro, uh, policies. And we should, we should not also forget that uh, the, the, the interest of the Nigerian masses must be put into consideration. It shouldn't be everything revenue, revenue, taxes, taxes. But on the vehicle now, the, the, everybody seems to be overstretched anyway. You are bringing in more than three, four, five. Uh, uh, levy and taxes on one particular vehicle. So who suffers it is the final consumer. So that's why we have uh, seek for clarification on this. And if nothing is done, we now you know, call down to the government is in place and so that. But we believe that there must be clarification between and next one. All right, now, Dr. Farinto, I want to understand something still. Um, over time, uh, since government reviews um, taxes, has there been a provision of adequate infrastructure in return for the monies that have been collected from all of these increases that we have had over time on your uh, maritime sector specifically? No, nothing like that. Even the roads that have been awarded for resurfacing and the rehabilitation, the, the various contractors have been working on this road in the last uh, one or two years. It is not completed. It's very, very unfortunate that maritime industry is just too big. And that's why we sold an idea to the incoming government. It's must be unbundled. We have a very a, a very large Ministry of Transportation that is too large for being too big for being big safe. And nothing seems to be done. Infrastructure is uh, decaying on a daily basis. Even the so-called railway, at least uh, our going government said they have actually uh, brought for us. Nobody's the issue of uh, Rail for cargo has not been, you know, really emphasized. It's only rail for maybe uh, to carry human beings here and there. So every developing country must look at three uh, three-way system or uh, transport system. You look at the road, you look at the rail, and you look at the water, waterways and the badges. And that's why we said there must be much more 
transport system. So the new incoming government must look at this so that if you unbundle all these things, the issue of taxes, the revenue will be rolling out. Once there's con con convenience for people and there's value added service, you, will, you do not need to bring in unnecessary uh, adjustment taxes uh, to slam it on Nigerians uh, because you want to generate uh, revenue. So the infrastructures are not there, I'll tell you that, and it's very, very disheartening. That's by the fact that the port has been concessioned in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. Uh, there's no added value added. I just want to commend Nigerian importers who are still, despite all this uh, decay in infrastructure, still bringing their consignment to our hotel. It is not encouraging. Honestly. Let me stay with um, the issue of infrastructure before we talk about other salient issues uh, uh, plaguing uh, your sector. You know, over time, uh, coming into a Papa Axis has actually been a major challenge. There's been so much going on in terms of, uh, you know, promises and, of course, some policies and then projects. How would you say on a daily basis has um, all of that impacted uh, on, um, you know, services of, of um, customs agents in um, the Papa Axis? Yes, uh, time is always being wasted. Before now, the managing director of Nigerian Port Authority did a magic wine, and uh, we had a free flow of traffic in Apapa until about a few weeks ago. In the last two, three weeks now, you've been having uh, congestion and gridlock on Alanga Paro because they are repairing uh, the part of the road. And uh, that is why uh, everybody needs to, when you want to repair road at times, you need to carry out uh, carry along stakeholders. Uh, even Kotoni here, when they want to resurface their road, they do it at night. So that cargoes will be able to exit the port, exports will be able to move into the port. Even vehicular traffic will not be in that. Because now, everything seems to be jam packed. For you to come into a papa now, takes another accounting tax, as if we are the, we are the, you know, going back to what uh, we have actually came out from in the last point. This is very, very discouraging. It's very, very disheartening to see that Nigeria governments, every successive government, seems to be only you know, uh, you know, look over, you know, uh, I don't know how to look at it, abandon maritime industry. And uh, all the only interested is in revenue, the taxes, or whatever you do. The, the issue of infrastructures are not being put in place. You know, if there's a, there's what is called port uh, development plan, we'll be able to envisage in the next 10 years, this is one government is com coming up. We don't even have port development plan. We don't even have it. Mm. What happens to our maritime industry in the next five years? No, it doesn't. It doesn't exist everywhere in the world. We're talking about this authorization, we we are only celebrating IMO days and all these other days. And when it comes to the days uh, they being celebrated, pragmatically, the governments seem to be very far from the, the downturn and the citizenry. It's not so good. It's very very discouraging. Right. And uh, you know, time is money. This is my time in those. Mm. The moment your time is wasted. You'll be able to, you won't be able to position container for examination. You won't be able to deliver to the consignee as a And that's number one. On that's on one part. On the other part, we actually spoke with the government that bring in scanner. This is non-intrusive uh, equipment so that it will discourage 100% examination of a cargo. We'll be able to deliver cargo on time. Mm. The so-called scanner that were purchased a scanner that cannot even identify psychotropic substances. He, can, he may not be able to identify even when he got is in the container, let alone the contraband. Are we moving forward? All right. Who was actually giving this contract of scanner? So it's on very well. I say the maritime industry is too big mm, to just under a minister of transportation. It must be unbundled. It All right. must be unbundled. All right, Dr. Farinto, let's just move on for the sake of um, time now. Uh, last year, the Nigerian Customs Service uh, withdrew the controversial National Automotive Council levy on imported used vehicles, though it retained its 5% add-on tariff. Can you walk us through what it takes to clear a vehicle from port vis-a-vis -vis all of the payment duties and all with customs uh, uh, so far? It depends on the kind of vehicle, what kind of vehicle, used one, new one. Don't forget that there's a federal government policy that said any vehicle that is above 12 years can be coming. Meaning that it is only a vehicle of 2014 or there about that can come into Nigeria. And if you have a 2014 Toyota Corolla, for instance, the first thing you do is to get a V reg The V reg is under the Federal Ministry of Finance and it depends on the cubic capacity. A Corolla cannot be less than 5,000 naira. When you not get your V reg you not apply to customs for VIN validation. In the, on your view valuation, you may be paying almost 800,000 naira 
was there about on the 2014 Corolla, if not one that. The fuel duty and every other tax, minimum of 1.2 million total duty paid. Now, I won't pay that, you now go through the examination before the cargo is released. When the VIN valuation was released, I did told them that if releasing VIN valuation is a very good, but let's, just, let's make it seamless. Seamless is the situation where, that I have a Corolla 2014, I have declared to the system, and I paid what the, the system gave to me. It should be auto release. But what customer does is to see reverse you now back, you now see go and meet an officer who now conducts an examination, goes for the manual release before this, the, the, uh, this release is passed, before you are able to get uh, your cargo release the shipping company and uh, maybe the terminal will now give you the terminal delivery order and you now exit the container. I mean, the, the cargo or the vehicle. And as you are still leaving... Mr. Fadito, are you still with us? Yes, I'm with you. So okay. these are the things and these are the processes we'll All right. to, to clear the boom break. Okay. And as you're doing that, mm. the legal state is just introducing uh, TVT again, and they call it uh, uh, something vehicular tax. Mm -hmm. So maybe you were, were one or two days ago, and that's the way I climb on that. All right. Do not over Dr. Farrant, I just need to put one word in edgewise as we wrap up very quickly. I just want to get some um, reason for this in 30 seconds. Uh, from what we hear from reports, your association has rejected the 20% reduction in tariff being put forward by the two companies in the aviation industry, that's um, the Skyway Aviation Handling Company, SACO, and the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company, NACO. Can you explain for that just very quickly as we round off? Yes, what, what people are saying is that we are not saying you should not increase. There must, be, there must be infrastructure and equipment. Uh, the, with the two grand handlers in the airport, it's only SACO that has equipment, newly bought equipment. Uh, NACO does not seem to have. They only tell us that they have, they have imported. That's number one. And if it must increase, let it not be 100%. What do people are clamoring for? It? Let there be an increment, maybe by 50%. So that we'll be able to take it back to the consignee or the owner of the cargo. And there's an increment in your handling charges and cargo, right. and cargo charges by the grand handler. But they are insisting that they only give 20%. And our people are not shifting ground. Uh, they are also saying that you, what you are increasing does not commiserate what he, is on ground, and you do not have the handling equipment. That's where there is a standstill now. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we do appreciate your time. We've been speaking with Dr. Kayode Farin, the uh, um, acting president of um, ANCA, uh, that's Association of um, Licensed um, Customs Agent. We we'll do appreciate your time on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, as we go on the show now, youth unemployment remains one of the defining challenges of our time, not just in Nigeria, but across West Africa and beyond. Addressing youth unemployment uh, means finding solutions with and for young people who are seeking a decent and productive job, uh, working but living in poverty or are discouraged by current labor market uh, prospect. A such solution should address both labor supply through education, skills development and training, and labor demand through job creation and an enabling environment for entrepreneurship. I'll leave you with details of that feature. I am Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Many thanks for watching. The nation's higher educational institutions equip graduates with hard skills while neglecting the development of employability skills, which are core for the transitioning into the labor market, as well as for workplace productivity. The lack of these skills in graduates keeps them in the pool of the unemployed, no matter their degree of certification. Now, Executive Director Ego Foundation Tuluashi Olanio says this project aims to equip participants with the right skill set for employment and also prepare them for the world of entrepreneurship. Uh, a good number of young people um, are currently not unemployed, if able. And this is because uh, they lack the basic skills, like critical thinking, problem solving, those skills that can help them perform in the labor market. So employers are not getting what they want from them. Unfortunately, they're able to employ them. And after the flag off of this project, we're setting up um, mentoring and coaching um, centers across different institutions where students are able to speak to coaches and are able to like have continuous um, career development sessions so that it doesn't just end here. One of the unique aspects of this training is to provide access to jobs for selected participants and also expose them to the realities of the workplace. Employability is an important part of um, our economic growth because when the people 
of the nation or the society are employed, productivity is increased as a company, I mean as a country, and um, the GDP of the country also tries on productivity. A way forward is for people to actually consider a lot of capacity building trainings. The four walls of an academic institution is not going to provide all the kind of knowledge and skills you need. You have to self-develop, self-train yourself through different taking part in trainings, capacity building and the likes. There are several causes of graduate unemployment in Nigeria, including an inelastic labor market to absorb the turnover. Some of the participants share their thoughts. Still by skill acquisition. Because most of the like most most companies now I don't know how to put that English, like they don't really want to employ more because technology is already taking over over lots of um, jobs now. With the help of writing a good CV, because majority of us, I think the reason why we are not seeing good jobs is because of not, like, not, like you can't write good CVs. So with this program now, so they are teaching us how to write good CVs on how to get good jobs. Another way to address the challenge of employability skill-induced employment is to incorporate the learning of these skills in the curriculum of higher education.